Lancashire Hot Pot, another one of those things. Done properly, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Done badly, it's really just tough lamb in a, in a kind of watery sauce. Uh, we're at Nielsen, we work for Nielsen, so it's done properly and it's done well, and they'll be talking about it all over the mountain. Like it. We're using lamb leg for the meat that we're using in this. This will come to you pre-diced. If it wasn't to come to you pre-diced, i.e. a leg of lamb, what you really need to do is just take the meat off the bone and dice it into roughly 20 pea-sized pieces. And there's some fat on this as well. That's fine. That's where a lot of the flavour in lamb is, in the fat. Now, we need to season this meat, and then we need to colour it off, brown it in this pan, take it out, and it goes back in later. But seasoning, 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 okay? It's mostly all about the seasoning. Get that right, and you'll find that your guests will continually comment on what a great cook stroke chef you are, okay? You'll find that we mostly season before we cook. So seasoning up here on a tray is much better than trying to season in this pan. We can get a much more in-depth seasoning going on. We can massage the seasoning into those meats. I'm also going to oil in this tray as well. Now, take your fingers and massage that oil and that salt and that pepper into the meat. First part of the recipe is browning this lamb off, okay? Browning the lamb off requires maintaining a steady high heat in the bottom of this pan throughout the browning process. If I took all of this meat and dump it into that pan, we will not brown the meat, we will not fry the meat. All that will happen is it will start to boil in the bottom of the pan because the liquid will come out of the meat and you're boiling meat, not frying meat, okay? So it's important that we accept that we can't do it all at once. No matter what the time schedule's like, you need to allow time to be able to brown this off individually. Okay, Nikki's browned off that first batch. It's come out of the frying pan into this bowl just to wait for us. She's now doing the second batch of meat. If I can just show you, nice caramelized look on the outside of the meat. That means it's fried. If you hadn't fried it, it would be opaque kind of gray, and it would be a boiled piece of meat, which is not what we're aiming for. Nikki's taking the uh, last batch of that lamb out of that hot frying pan. She's done a great job there. She's got lots of nice color. She's got lots of nice caramelization taking place. Now, we're gonna put uh, some other stuff with this. Lamb is lovely, but we wanna spice it up a bit. We're gonna do some chorizo sausage to go in there. I'm gonna pop that straight into Nikki's pan there. No need to add any more oil. She's got a lot of lamb fat in the bottom of that pan. The chorizo will render a lot of its own fat as well. Uh, we've diced some onions earlier. They've been skinned uh, and Nikki just ran a knife through them. In they go. And it's all about adding these multi layers of flavor. So we've got that lamb flavor taken care of. We've got that chorizo in there now. We're now putting in the onion. This cooks low and slow and all those flavors are drawn out. Someone eats it after a hard day skiing, you know, it goes straight to their head. Bang, I love this stuff. It's a good flavor. I'm coming skiing with Nielsen again next week, next month, and next year. Yeah, Shrits is a real bang flavor. So I'm gonna drop these carrots in as well. We prepared these earlier. They've been skinned, cut, so in they go. And it's just about this stage that I've got my oven turned on and preheated. We're gonna go at 160 degrees for this. This long, slow process gets finished off in the oven. Two bay leaves are going in now. Leave the bay leaves whole. And I've also got some chopped herbs. It's probably about a teaspoon of chopped herb. Sweating this down so we're not adding any color. So we're putting the flour in now. This is gonna act as our thickening agent for the sauce that we're going to create. If we sprinkle that in, Nikki's going to stir that in there. So we're going to add our Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce is a fantastic product to be using in um, stews and casseroles. It gives a real punch of flavor. I'm going to add my stock as well, a little bit at a time. You'll notice that the meat has accumulated a number of juices. We like those juices. That's the whole reason we went to that effort to fry it earlier on. Give that a good stir, Nikki. Get it all together. Now we've got to finish this in the oven. Heat proof dish, it's going to go in the oven. It's the same dish that's going to end up on the table. Nikki prepared these potatoes for me earlier. They're raw potatoes that she's peeled and sliced. They're about a millimetre thick. I now want to season and butter 
these potatoes before they become the top of my Lancashire hot pot. So a good grind of salt in there, good grind of pepper in there. We're back to the seasoning. Can I have that butter poured over top of those, Nicky? And now mix that in with your hands. So just like dominoes, one after the other. Lots of potatoes on top. Straight on there, straight off to the oven. Okay. At 160 for about an hour, hour and a half. Perfect. I would always set an alarm, come back in about three quarters of an hour, make sure it's working, make sure it's doing its business, and then you know, head off back to cleaning, whatever you're doing. Oh wow, this looks fantastic. Look at the potatoes, they're all standing up on ends and they're crispy on the end. Be careful, it's hot. So, two oven gloves. Make sure you've got something on your bench and that's ready to go to the table.